Today we're taking the metro north, jumping on the subway, then we're going to Brooklyn, baby. It is raining cats and dogs out here, but that's not gonna keep me from uh, going to some random video game stores out here in Brooklyn. Let's do it. Hopping on the N train all the way down to Bay Ridge will eventually get you to the Brooklyn Game Shack. Now there are a ton of video game stores in New York with a very small amount of space, and this one is no exception. But what it lacks in space, it more than makes up with uh, personality. Right off the bat, they've got a pretty good PC Engine collection, which is really nice to see. They also have a very decent N64 collection that is very well labeled. They use the same labels that I do, which I actually get from Etsy. Having these Amiibo unlocked special things in Metroid Returns, and that's actually a pretty decent price for them. The prices in general are pretty good, all things considered. New York rent is expensive, but they've actually got pretty decent prices across the board, and uh, a ton of rare things that I don't normally see. This is actually a variant of Wheel of Fortune that I kind of need for my Wii U set. And for 10 bucks, I would have got it. But uh, for 40 bucks, which is still a decent price, I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. Which is more exciting, this top loader NES or that Spice Orange GameCube in the background? This is a small store with a big personality. Totally worth checking out if you're all the way out in Bay Ridge. I ended up with four more N64 games. So today we're going out to Brooklyn, all the way down to uh, Bay Ridge, where we're going to see uh, quite a few video game stores, three to be exact. And uh, what we're going to do is go all the way down to the first video game store, which you've already seen. And then on our way back into Manhattan, we're gonna hit two more video game stores. I've got a little business in Manhattan, so uh, this is all very convenient for me. And I've been meaning to go to these video game stores for about ever, because people just constantly say how great these uh, stores in particular are. I'm halfway through my N64 collection, which I'm very excited about and as always the reason we're trying to go to all these video game stores is because we're trying to go to a hundred video game stores uh, just to check out what they've got and see what's going on now the name of the show is flip and do a hop skip and a jump away is Brooklyn arcade and games now they've actually got two locations this one is clearly the one that is uh, more of an arcade According to the people working there, uh, this place gets hopping during the weekends and not so much at 5 o'clock when it opens uh, on a Tuesday when it's raining. They actually had a pretty decent selection of 3DS games and the prices across the board were pretty decent. Elite Beat Agents is a rhythm based game where you're basically a cheerleader for people that have low self esteem This is a pretty simple but fun fighting game that you can play with a Wiimote. I really love my PS Vita. It's very simple to mod yourself. As I look through these Dreamcast games, I noticed I noticed uh, the San Francisco Rush game. I uh, had no idea that this came out for anything other than N64. Even though these are common sports games, it's still refreshing to see TurboGrafx-16 games for so inexpensive. I've never played this game, but I kind of want to know more about the X-Mutants. Sitting in their relatively small N64 collection is a game that I've been looking for, International Track and Field. And for 25 bucks, not a bad price. And not for nothing, they actually did have some not for sale games that were pretty pricey. More times than not, whenever I see a complete in box version of a game, I think of it as a tiny piece of art. If I like the box art of something, I might just pick it up just so I can look at it later. I always love seeing a bargain box, even if there's nothing in there that I need. I just like going through them and seeing if there's something that uh, catches my fancy. When I was a kid in high school, people said I looked a lot like Jackie Chan. I looked nothing like Jackie Chan. They were just racist. I'm not sure whether or not I've seen this stand up by Dave Chappelle. Low key though, I'm thinking about collecting movies on UMD for no reason. I have one of these clear play it loud Game Boys. Unfortunately, mine doesn't work. I really liked this game as a kid. It's actually a Holy Sword game though. I wonder how well this game transferred to Game Boy Color. It's actually kind of funny. That Duke Nukem game right there, uh, I really wanted as a kid. This probably has some sort of tie in to Quest 64. I have no clue what it is though. They did have a pretty nice copy of Super Mario Bros for the NES complete in box. Funny story about my particular copy, I actually got mine complete in box for $5. This place was more of an arcade than it was a video game store, but that's also because they have a separate store that's a video game store. I picked up quite a few things and it's definitely worth going to. And I got one more N64 game. Now it's a little bit rainy and we're going to the second book off in New York City. 
Now, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you this. It was a risky move wearing my AirTech Challenge 2s uh, in such rainy weather, especially because they're mostly white. This book off is actually on the second floor of this building. This is their anime, manga, and video game location. Now, if you're unaware, Book Off is actually a Japanese-based second-hand store that sells mainly stuff like books and that sort of thing. Funny enough, this version of Tetris might have different music on it if it was printed early enough. They actually sell a wide variety of video game systems here. This is actually where I got my Famicom Disk System in box. If you're looking to pick up Japanese versions of games, this is the place to go. Additionally, if you're a huge fan of manga or anime, they've got a ton of that here. My personal collection isn't really set up to have a whole bunch of figurines, but if you're into figurines, you can get small, medium, and large figurines all over the place here. This particular location is more considered the second location to the first one in Manhattan. And be warned, they're very separate entities. If you pick up something here, you have to return it here. You can't return it to the Manhattan one. I actually wasn't sure what these yellow things were at first, but when I looked a little bit closer, they're actually book off branded Fami clones, which means they play Super Famicom and Famicom games. Uh, and it's just kind of neat that they made these. I'm pretty certain that these are both Japanese and you can probably get them cheaper in Japan. But if you take into consideration importing these or a ticket to Japan, they're not that bad in price. While this is the type of place I'd normally get very excited for, I'm really holding back in terms of purchasing because I'm heading to Japan very soon. These prices are a little bit higher than say eBay prices, but they're probably cheaper than, you know, some of the book offs in like Akihabara or some of the more trafficked city places in Japan. But if you're not planning to go to Japan anytime soon, these are still pretty cheap, especially when you compare them to their uh, US counterparts. So if you're trying to play a game, uh, but you don't really need to read the game, uh, pick it up here. At the end of the day, this is just a great place to browse. There are probably thousands of things. And if you're just generally looking into anything that's anime based, manga based, Japanese, video game based, it's more than likely that you're gonna, in some way, shape, or form, find something even slightly related. Another thing to note is that if you're a fan of, you know, Nintendo, there are just so, so many games that were Japanese exclusive that only came out uh, in Japan that you can find here, check out, and you know, like 20% of the time, play without any, you know, need to know Japanese. Now, this general area is actually pretty cool. Uh, right next to this store, they have a Daiso, they have all of these claw machines, and there's a bunch of places to eat on the bottom floor of this place that I just didn't really get into. Uh, so if you're looking to take a date here, if you're looking to hang out with some homies, uh, really whatever you want to do, uh, you can come out here and check it out. It's also a very family friendly place as well. They have decent enough parking and uh, these crane games are really good for kids and they do have a couple of rides that you can put your kid on if you're into that. A funny side story, I didn't realize until I got on this elevator that this is also where Able Cine is located. Uh, if you're uninitiated initiate or know nothing about production, Abel Cindy has like super, super high-end uh, cameras. These video game stores are just another example of how you can find absolutely every and anything you want to find in New York.